Please note, the content of this video describes the effects of low blood glucose on the brain and may be potentially upsetting for some viewers. Like the rest of our body, the brain is no exception in that it needs fuel to work. This fuel is normally provided by an essential sugar called glucose, but as explained in the first video, in CHI, very high levels of insulin cause blood glucose to reach dangerously low levels. This is known as hypoglycemia, or hypo for short. But what actually is hypoglycemia? In part, it refers to the amount of glucose in the blood. Ideally, this is kept within a range of 4 to 6 millimole per litre. A hypo is said to occur when blood glucose drops below the lowest point of this normal range. Unfortunately, it isn't really this straightforward and there still isn't a definition that absolutely everybody agrees on. Doctors have however agreed on targets of blood glucose that should be used in babies with CHI. It's important to understand that normally our bodies can counteract hypoglycemia by breaking down fats to make an alternative energy source called ketone bodies. Unfortunately, in CHI, as well as reducing the amount of glucose in our blood, insulin also stops us producing these reserve energy sources. This means that during times of hypoglycemia, the brain is essentially being starved. Unsurprisingly, this is not sustainable, and just like a car would struggle to run on low fuel, our brains do too. Running on empty for long periods of time has a number of effects. For example, research has shown that children exposed to continued hypoglycemia undergo changes in the wiring of their brains. This can cause irreversible brain damage. Brain damage caused by hypoglycemia may result in children developing learning difficulties or suffering from fits. In fact, if hypoglycemia is left untreated, it can be life-threatening. This shows just how important it is to diagnose CHI as early as possible to reduce the chances that blood glucose levels will dip into hypoglycemia. However, recent evidence has shown that it's not just how long a child suffers from hypoglycemia that affects their outcome, but also how often it occurs and how low blood glucose dips. This is often referred to as the severity, intensity and frequency of a hypo, but it is still not fully understood whether it is the different levels of low blood glucose that are responsible for the degree of brain damage or whether how long a child is exposed to low blood glucose is more important. Although every patient is different, what is widely agreed is that early diagnosis and rapid correction is key. In part, this is made possible through understanding the genetics that underpin the disease. Fortunately, in recent years, researchers have made great progress in this area and are continuing their efforts to make the future of CHI patients as bright as possible. Thank you for listening to the final video of the series. If you would like any further information or support, please don't hesitate to contact your local CHI care provider.